Harps. Yes, our Harp concert. Would you welcome, please, Alice Shalafu. Thank you for coming tonight. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? How are things back in Cleveland? Same as always. <laughs> Cold. Cold. Uh, were, were you surprised when uh, People Magazine came to do a story about you? I was quite surprised when uh, Frazier Moore called me and asked me if I would do, would consent to an interview. I said, well, I'll see. And so then he uh, spoke with a friend of mine right. who... Uh, told him my age, you see. I think my claim to fame is my advanced age, which happens to be 80. You, oh, come on now. Yeah. That's you don't right. look 80 years old. You really don't. I don't feel 80. Well, that's the main thing. Yeah, that's the main thing. Age is only a number anyhow. As a matter of fact. But anyway, Frazier said to this friend, is she still lucid enough for an interview? Lucid enough? <laughs> That's always nice, right? They want to know if everything's working. Huh? Yeah, so yeah. I met him at the airport and gave him a real wild ride back. <laughs> <laughs> you have been teaching the harp a good number of years then, haven't you? When did you first start? 1931. 31? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I saw a, a show, um, I don't know whether it was on 60 Minutes or something, that was, had to do with high school orchestras, and they were having trouble getting young people mm -hmm. uh, to play instruments like the tuba, or the sousaphone, and they thought they were going to lose those band, and, mm -hmm. you know, instruments like the harp, because kids didn't want to play it anymore. They wanted mm -hmm. to play the guitars, or... you have trouble getting people to want to study the harp? No, I teach uh, at uh, three schools, Cleveland Institute of Music, mm -hmm. and Oberlin Conservatory, and Baldwin Wallace Conservatory, and I run the Summer Harp Colony in Camden, Maine. Uh -huh. And last summer, we had 51 harpists up there. That's incredible. So Not all at once. Yeah. <laughs> so there is still a demand for people who yes. want, to, want mm -hmm. to learn the harp. Somebody told me that you... You said that if you play a harp the wrong way, you can actually oh, you can do injury yourself. to yourself? You certainly can. In what way? It sounds like a Well, uh, a lot of people, sometimes they will raise their shoulders like this. And, of course, any time that there's tension uh -huh. in playing an instrument, and uh, these boys over here, of course, are extremely relaxed, I'm sure. So more, relaxed, more relaxed than they usually should be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they get so relaxed, sometimes they don't even move. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure they don't have any problems, but uh, people can have problems. I had a student once who came to me. She had been playing with closing her hands with two fingers sticking out this way. And, of right. course, she developed a lot of tension here. So you can actually cause yes, some kind of injury. I've had a lot of experience with people with problems. Yeah. Is the harp difficult to learn? I mean, it... It, it sounds so good when you start, you know. You can yeah. be a beginner and play and, and you pull a string and it sounds lovely. Yeah. I remember watching in the old Marx Brothers pictures, mm -hmm. Harpo Marx would come and play, and he was quite skilled, was he not? I mean, when he sat down to play? Well, that, that's not the way I heard it, but anyway. Oh. Uh. <laughs> well, I was just giving you my, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a, you must understand, Alice, I'm not a harp expert, but I thought he played pretty well. Uh, well, we'll just leave it. Let it go with that. <laughs> He did, a lot. <laughs> he did a lot to make the harp popular. I guess, well, that's what I meant. But he played a lot of the <laughs> That's certainly what I meant. I phrased that wrongly. Now, you played in the Cleveland Orchestra for 40-some years? 43. From 1931 till 74. Yeah. And then I figured that uh, I'd probably last longer teaching. Well, are, are, are men who lead symphony orchestras tough to get along with? Are they intimidating? Or... Oh, they really are. You feel the pressure when they're up there? Of course, we had one of the last of the great tyrants was George Self. Yes. Who could really cut you down with what the orchestra members referred to as a glossy stare. <laughs> and, Just stop uh, and look at you? Oh, yes. But if I was very fortunate because I'm very nearsighted. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't care what he did. So while he thought he was intimidating, you didn't even see him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I would uh, look right straight at him like this. I probably intimidated him. That's funny. <laughs> just give him that stare back. I stared back. Uh, you, do you play the harp anymore yourself now? No, I have so many good students, I figured it's time to move over. You're right. And let them do the playing. Do most of the students, is there is there desire to play in a, a, a symphony orchestra, most of them? Uh, I think so. Mm -hmm. Of course, the symphony orchestra, they're only... Uh, one or two positions. Right. Where with, if you get the fiddle players, they're 14 and... Right. 
So you have to be lanes, exceptional, yes. I suppose, to get a job mm -hmm. like that. Uh, yeah. What are these three you wanted to mention? Did we mention the uh, different schools that you teach in Cleveland? I teach at the Cleveland Institute of Music, which is a great school with our director, David Cerrone, has really done a remarkable job. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Oberlin Conservatory, another fine school, one of the oldest conservatories in the country, and uh, Baldwin Wallace Conservatory. Good. All right, now, uh, these, uh, when we come back, we're going to take a break here, and you have four young people. Are they all from... They are from, uh, two of them are from Oberlin, mm -hmm. and one of them are, uh, is from the Cleveland Institute, and one studies with me in the summer in Camden, Maine. Marvelous. When we come back, you can introduce the young people, and we'll have a... All right. And they'll make Harpo Marx look like nothing. <laughs> so stay where you are. We'll be right back. Would a harp fit into that kind of an arrangement at all? Uh, if it were a little quieter. A little quieter, yeah. Before you introduce these young people, <clears throat> I'm going to ask if you made this quote in People magazine. I like this quote. What was that? Well, it says, I'm lucky, I like what I do, says the grand dame of the harp. It would be ghastly to have some crappy job. <laughs> Is that yours? That's exactly mine. You're my kind of gal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. We're going to open the curtain here, and would you introduce these, uh, these four young people? I will be happy to. Uh, on the left is Mindy Dalmas from Baltimore. Right. Uh, the next is Xiaole Shang from Shanghai, China. Yeah. Elizabeth Ramey from Brewster, Mass. Trina Struble from Denver, Colorado. Okay, Trina. And what are they going to do for they're going to, uh, they're going to play Malaganya. Okay. Ladies, it's all yours.
I think you taught them very well. You should be very proud of them. Thank you. I am proud of them. Yeah. Thank you for being with us tonight, and thank you, young ladies. We'll, we'll see you again. Fine. Good night.